All right, guys, Coach Santiago here. I want to talk about uh, a very important topic to me. I've been involved in travel baseball for the better part of 13 years. My first opportunity to get involved in travel ball was back in 2003. The game and the opportunities available to players has changed immensely since 2003. The good parts that I've seen kind of get developed um, have been the areas of accessibility. Kids now have a tremendous amount of access to former professional athletes, former college athletes, current major league players. There's a lot that's out there and available to these players to get involved in. Uh, one of the things that I've seen happen that's really bothered me about where we're going in travel baseball or showcase baseball or scout baseball, whatever it is that you think you're doing to help your son play college baseball. Uh, I want to be very, very clear uh, about something. In the very best case scenario, okay, the coaches that you are just dreaming to play for, the schools that you're dreaming to play for, see you and see you perform well, they bring you on campus, they meet you, they meet your family, and they make a formal offer for a scholarship to your play. But let's assume, best case scenario, that actually happens. There's, there's going to be 35 guys on a team, and there's only 11.7 scholarships available. Baseball is not a fully funded sport like football or basketball at some Division I uh, universities. So you're still going to have to probably write a check, and you're probably going to have to write a big one. And this is some of the stuff that's not talked about by a lot of travel coaches. And a lot of event organizers are out there promoting this idea that you have an automatic scholarship. And the word scholarship in baseball, meaning that you are done paying as a mom or a dad. I talked to 10 parents, they're not talking to me about Division II NAIA junior college baseball. They've got a dream to play Division I baseball, and that's fine. We should all have dreams, we should all have aspirations. But I am here to tell you the truth and here to help you understand that as you're making these decisions on where to invest your money, where to invest your time as a mom or a dad, know that if your best case scenario, all the things we talked about earlier in this blog happen, just make sure that what you're paying for is an investment in that experience. Because that's probably what you're gonna walk away with, whatever you gain from that experience. But this delusion or this belief at times by some parents that, hey, I'm going to spend a lot of money now because I'm going to get that in scholarship money later is just not the case for a very, very large percentage of parents, uh, of players going through the process. So, and, and understand that, hey, just because you get a scholarship does not mean it's free. And just because you play at a different level than Division One does not make you a failure. The documentation supports um, the fact that even at your best school, fully funded, it's 11.7 scholarships. Um, and there's 30 to 35 guys on each team. So that money's gotta go around to everybody. Um, and obviously there's additional grants and academic money for people to qualify for that, but usually you qualify for that regardless of baseball. So we're talking about the investments that you guys are making uh, in regards to baseball. So just something to think about. I want you guys to know that heading into your next summer season, your next showcase season, it's important that you know the truth about the path to college baseball. As always, feel free to contact me at CoachSantiago.com or CoachSantiago, the number eight at gmail.com, or give me a call at 407-797-8116. Thank you, and remember, coaching is an action, not just a position.